All right, we are back with round five for Swiss, and we'll be streaming a game between Melvin K, God of the Asia Pacific <laughs> region, and his opponent will be Wilson. Wait, who? Joseph. Oh, Joseph. Oh, right, UTS friend, right. All right, so his opponent will be Joseph, who has been on the fringes somewhat. And we'll be going straight into the game. So, no chance to look at Team Vivo, unfortunately. Melvin will lead with Kangaskhan and Togekiss. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen this team before. I think Melvin has not changed his team. No reason for him to. And Joseph, Joseph will respond with Lightbird and Rayquaza. Very interesting pick. I think Rayquaza has fallen a bit out of favour with the current meta. Right, so, so it's you see Joseph's, Joseph's team is going to be Ryoga with Mowal, Lightbird, Gengar and Flame. And on Melvin's side, yeah, his team I don't think has changed. Still has the Smeagle Zern, uh, Kangaskhan, Amoongus, Togekiss and Groudon. So, how do you think uh, Melvin will be able to deal with the Rayoga? If Melvin has inner focus Kangaskhan here, he has a lot of options. Though, of course, if he goes for the fake out, he's going to be locked into it by the Lightbird. So, again, if Togekiss chooses to tail in on Thunder Wave, I suppose Thunder Wave will be a better option here. Rayquaza. I think he had an interesting HP number. And Melvin chooses to retreat his Kangaskhan Goes and bring in the Zen, yes. leaving it open to a potential Dragon Ascent punish. Hmm. What does the total case go for As here? Joseph will Mega his Rayquaza, so definitely didn't bring Mawao this game. You never know, but yeah, what does the total case go for here in this? Thunder Wave, I would suspect. On the Rayquaza? Unless he gets taunted by the Lightbird. And Lightbird goes for Encore. Tries to Encore the Fake Out. Oh, and Rayquaza right. will Dragon Ascend. I think it is into the Xerneas. That would be very bad if it is. Oh, it actually goes for Togo Kiss. Kiss. Melvin's Togo Kiss not the most physically bulky, but will take a, will take a, will survive and proc a Citrus Berry. I think that was a life orb. Oh, we'll have to hold on for that. No, no it wasn't. There's no more was life it a orb. choice ban? And Thunder Wave does go off onto Rayquaza. Considering the damage, I'm inclined to suspect that is a choice ban that Rayquaza. Which will explain why he didn't protect on turn Could one. Could be a Sash as well. That, but Not no, with it doesn't that make sense. Damage. Yeah, I mean, the Sash you want to preserve it against the Fake Out as well. Well, either way, things are looking pretty good for Melvin. I mean, he doesn't even have to go for the Geomancy here because he'll just get locked down by the Life Bar anyway. And it's no, just he can just follow me. Oh yeah, that is true, that is true. At this point, Melvin just has to follow me, Geomancy, and follow me for the rest of the game. So, of course, but then Togekiss will go down, so... Yeah. And follow me, he loses follow me, and then Xerneas can't throw attacks freely, so yeah. I suppose that is a danger. I, I mean, at this point, the Rayquaza has uh, dro uh, di dropped his defenses by one stage. Actually, no! Yeah. Melvin still has to go... He follow me, Geomancy's distance, if Togekiss goes down, Kangasun comes in with Fake Out. Hmm, and Xerneas presses an attack, and then doesn't matter if they get on court. He, he does leave himself open to the Rayquaza coming back and Dragon Ascending by Xerneas, but no, that play is not going to happen because Rayquaza retreats. Gengar and comes to see a Gengar. So likely a Sash Gengar, not a Mega since the uh, Rayquaza is really Mega. And, and Togekiss will follow me, and I think we'll eat uh, either a Taunt or an Encore. And he takes a Swagger. So that's, I suppose, it's one way out for Joseph. Try and force Togekiss to hit itself instead of follow me in the Encore. And then Lightpart and Gengar, which of them would have the Sash? Gengar, I suspect. Gengar. So Lightpart having a black, gla black Glasses item instead. Uh, there are Xerneas here going for the Geomancy. Gets it. Question now is whether Joseph will be able to lock it down the next turn. Melvin now has kind of the play. He has a risk here. Because he can't he can't he doesn't have a guarantee follow me or does he have a free switch into Kangaskhan? So if switching to Kangaskhan here would be his best play, but runs the risk. Hmm. I think he has to do it here unless he wants to chance the follow me uh, through yeah, confusion. He, he could Yeah, he's going for the Kangaskhan switch. So his Xerneas would protect this turn? This will protect this turn, but now did Joseph call the play and try and focus fire into the Kangaskhan slot? A slash bomb and a foul play will bring down Kangaskhan, especially in non mega form. Uh -huh. I don't know oh, but see Joseph goes for the encore. And the slash bomb into, into all right, the Kangaskhan. Kiss. Normal Kangaskhan slot does get poisoned, but all Melvin needs is the fake out. I mean, that was pretty logical considering that that was the Toga Kiss slot, uh, Fairy being weak to poison. Or rather, Gengar probably has no other attacks. Yeah, I mean, Shadow Ball wouldn't have done much in that in that sense. Oh, I suppose, yeah, Togekiss was down, was recovered with Citrus Berry, so I believe Gengar does carry IC win, but IC win wouldn't would have been enough to finish off Togekiss. So now, uh, Melvin in position to, to start out sweeping. Gleam. Yeah, to start but sweeping. But the thing is, Gengar is still sashed. I, I think with the Geomancy up, he can afford to take a, a, a Slash Bomb. 
poison though could shut him down quite quickly. Uh, I think I think even with the poison he will have enough time for it. Doesn't Zenius even bring Gengar to his sash, but I suppose it was sash so it didn't matter. Now Slash One will go on to the Xerneas. And Joseph really banking on poison here. Oh gets a crit! No, not a crit. Uh, but that's no just, poison, yeah. That's just a 4 HP Xerneas, in fact. And Kangaskhan does fade to the poison. That's actually a lot of damage on the Xerneas. I kinda wonder. Is the Gengar a boosting item? Can't we actually, yeah, actually we didn't see the sash, right? Yeah, and, it's and that is a lot of damage on Xerneas. We, we have not, it hasn't changed move either, so it's been just been using Slash Bomb. But it's specs. Considering that it's a plus two Xerneas, and Mega Gengar barely gets a 1e kill on Xerneas, doing 60% with a Slash Bomb after plus two, with a normal Gengar, I have to say, that, that has to be specs. Oh, and he did too much damage to Kangaskhan as well, let's not forget. Yeah, I mean, we we we, fact, we gave that to because Kangaskhan was not in his Mega form. So, but uh, on a, onto a plus two Xerneas, yes, I should have a boosting item on the Gengar. And Togekiss, you know, just following the SOP over here, just follow me for Xerneas to switch. Right, extreme speed will go into Togekiss. Uh -huh. I believe it's Bandit and will pick up the, not no, pick, up the pick up the cable. And Dazzling will pick up two kills. Unless it is Sash. Which is not. So Ricardo revealing that it is first ban. As expected from the damage roll on turn one. Even then, the Togekiss being bulky enough, I believe I have used Choice Band Rayquaza against Melvin before. And he survived, yes? Yes, it survived. I think I, rem I remember you I remember you telling me about that. Yeah, so I, I think it is calculated to be able to take it and survive to eat the berry. So a risk-free play for Melvin there. And forced to bring in Kyogre, his last Pokemon. Against the Xerneas, he does Moon Blast. And yeah. also Melvin could just S slash and insult the injury. I mean, at this point, I don't think I don't expect the Kyogre to be able to take down the Xerneas barring a critical hit because of the special defense boost from the Geomancy. So, and let's not forget, Melvin does have a Groudon at the back. So, Joseph has to start thinking of ways to maybe save the Rayquaza I think for he, called, game he did call his game, his game one, his, his game one least properly. But he definitely didn't expect Ben Rayquaza to not kill Doctor Kiss. Yes, as and neither I, did you. Yes. I neither have I for that matter. Melvin consistently spamming us with his bumpy bumpy kiss. And it looks like Joseph is just another person to add to that list. And brings in the ground on to change the weather so that Kyogre can't even rely on his stab moves. As Moonblast will go into Kyogre, no investment, so potentially a 1e KO. As it, it is, is, with a crit. And Melvin will take game 1 very comfortably. Despite the heart attack with the swagger onto his Togekiss, kiss. Forcing him to switch in Kangaskhan. Yeah, then again, that was a pretty... He adjusted pretty well, I yes. think. Instead and of falling over the trap of relying on luck. And now the problem here for Joseph is that I think all his tricks are open now. Melvin would have picked up on the fact that the dad's banned because Melvin knows the cow. Yeah. And Melvin might also have picked up on the fact that that is also a boost, offensively boosted Gengar. Maybe even modest, I suppose. If it's not an item boosted, then it's probably modest. So there's no way Timmy does that much damage to plus two Xerneas. Well, I guess if he has Light Part as support, he doesn't really need the speed on Gengar to... Uh, lock it down, so more power would make more sense. So but the yeah, sesh, the stage might be on the light after all. We didn't see that, did we? No, I believe the light part went down uh, to one hit kill from Dazzling Gleam, correct? We didn't see, we didn't see it, bring it down. It was kicked out. It was kicked out. All oh, right. Okay. So we are still lacking a lot of information on items. It should be pointed out though that Melvin, as we see on Team Rivo here, is playing with only five Pokemon without his Among Us. Due to his Among Us actually failing the hack check. Uh, well, even <laughs> despite that, him coming this far with just 5 Pokemon is a bit. It's expect to be expected from Melvin here. Uh, I think he has done, uh, done uh, himself. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, definitely earned that name of. What was it? God of the Apex region. Not sure don't agree, but they haven't played against Melvin. One day they'll know. One day they'll know. Yeah. So, I mean, Joseph, I think, shouldn't lead with the. Rayquaza at the start because he's bender especially. Yeah, now, that, just, now that Melvin knows, he just leaves himself open to being paralyzed one by the total case or being faked out by the Kanastan. And the light part option is not really going to work against Melvin as well. So as we saw. You could then you could kind of flip the scenario though. If Joseph had Dragon accepted the other slot, Zenith just goes down. Mm. Uh, and we're looking at a very different game. That is true. Because even after paralyzing the Rayquaza, Rayquaza's done his job by taking down the Xerneas. Nothing else on Melvin's team handles the Rayquaza well at all. That, that is actually quite true, yes. So I think Melvin is going to be able to adjust his needs. But the problem for Melvin as well is that because he's banned Rayquaza, 
he cannot bring Scuff's Mega. It just goes down in a single hit to extreme speed. Ah, uh, okay. Yep, and he does lead with the same... Not really the same, but what worked for him, Xerneas and Togekiss in oh, the previous game. A very good lead for... A very good lead for Joseph's side of the field, because now you really don't... You, you, if, if Lyper takes out either, he, leaves, he keeps getting a free target to Slash Bomb, and neither of his... And as Navi knows, Slash Bomb without a boost is going to want to kill his Xerneas. Yes. And Xerneas shouldn't really be protecting either in front of a Lyper. Oh, he can, he can. He can double protect this turn. Hmm. And follow me, the uh, on-call away. That is I think that's, that's pretty much his only play at this point. Hmm. That is something I don't think Joseph expects him to do, because... Face no with one, a Lyper, yeah. most players would rather protect and then switch out instead of... But yeah, he does have the option. Oh. He does switch actually, so not wanting to chance it. Is that Groudon? Oh, he's gonna be Kangaskhan. Oh, he's not gonna enjoy the Slash Bomb as you saw earlier. Yeah, and Lyper goes for the Fake Out onto the Togekiss. Okay. Melvin does call the wrong target. And Slash Bomb into the Kangaskhan. No, onto the Togekiss. He's gonna take it out to one hit. That is definitely Specs Gengar. I refuse to believe that it's not Specs Gengar. <laughs> uh, maybe Poison Plate? We'll have, we'll, we will see whether it still chooses to use And without form. follow me, Melvin has no efficient way to get the Geomancy up. Yeah, he does Unless he has Scrappy Fake Out. He but then he does open himself up to the Encore next turn. Yeah, I mean... Oh, he can Sucker Punch, what am I saying? Hmm. At this point though, he, he kind of has to Fake Out the Gengar because that is the most threatening. No, he can just Sucker Punch it. At this point, he, knows, he has no specs, which means he's going to go down to a Sucker Punch. And he stays in. <laughs> so, okay. but again, the Jomancy without Togo Kiss to redirect on call, the Jomancy is just not safe. Well, and, and Lyper goes for, for Swagger, swagger into the Xerneas. Yeah, trying to stop. I will see Sucker Punch come up. I think we are going to see Sucker Punch come up on Gaskar. We will see. And, and it's going to be Sucker Punch. He's going to take out the Gengar in one hit. I don't think you're going to need a second hit here. Oh, we do it. <laughs> we did. We did. Just about. Uh, so we still cannot confirm if the Gengar is oh, that's, that's Specs. It's gotta be Specs. <laughs> it's doing way too much damage. There is no way Gengar so takes out the Gengar. So No, he's not going for He is not going for Geomancy there. He's not? He's going for the attack. There's no reason to lock the door and let, let uh, Joseph on call you. That is true, that is true. Well, now Joseph is one down. Oh, at least both of them are on par with each other but now. Now Rayquaza can come in and wreak havoc. Yes. Now starting to stop Rayquaza from KOing either of these mods. Dragon Ascent. And I mean, Lyfra could just easily lock Kangaskhan into Sucker Punch. Uh, this is a step move's not gonna do much to Rayquaza, which, which can just freely Dragon Ascent everything. Yeah, it's not locks Kangaskhan into, into, into Sucker Punch, and Dragon Ascent is the Zernius. It's very little... Oh, but the problem with Joseph is that Zernius is faster right now. Why do you say that? Because it, Rayquaza hasn't Mega Evolved yet. Oh, that is true. So Zernius outspeeds Rayquaza? Well... Right now, yes. And because he's Bender, he can't protect. Which is why I think Joe is having a hard time making his decision here because yeah, what, what he is does go for Rayquaza. Yeah, he's he's going for it. I think maybe banking on the fact that Xerneas is confused might That's a very dangerous, itself. yeah. Yes, that is very dangerous indeed. Oh, does Lyper usually carry Helping Hand? Mm, Lyper doesn't learn Helping Hand. Oh yeah, no, no. What am I saying? He doesn't even help the speed that uh, Rayquaza is facing now. Uh... Thunder Wave, I suppose, but I, I don't think Viper really has space for Thunder Wave. Mm. Yeah, he's going to Mega Evolve. I think he's going to be running the race of Zernia, it's not attacking. Dangerous play, but I suppose he's out at this point. He can Encore the Kangaskhan. I expect him to Encore the Kangaskhan. And he's going to go first, and he's going to protect, protect in front of a light part. Uh, I mean, he would have been better off going for an attack, I feel. And I Encore onto the Kangaskhan. Into the Kangaskhan. Locks itself into Sucker Punch. Yeah, Sucker Punch goes into the Rayquaza, so still a good amount of damage. Yep, definitely. So Rayquaza with the Mega Evolve is going to get increased bulk. And Dragon Sand goes into the Xerneas slot. And I think Melvin, unless Melvin is not max speed Xerneas, I cannot really explain that play. Uh, at this point, it's very easy for Joseph to just Encore the Protect, Dragon Ascend the Kangaskhan. Which he does. Yeah. Pretty straightforward, and Melvin doesn't even switch, doesn't even want to risk uh, something coming in to take in the Dragon Ascent. Sucker Punch still does actually quite a lot of damage. Dragon Ascent will go into the Kangaskhan, and Melvin down to his last two. 
Groudon, I suspect. And Groudon, I suppose Groudon does survive uh, Dragon as Bender Dragon Ascent. No, I, I think added on with a foul play, I don't fancy the chances of it yeah, surviving. Yeah, that's true. Because what Joseph can just do now is just safely ignore the Xerneas since he's going to just be protecting anyway. Yeah, Melvin kind of puts himself in a very strange position. I can only assume that he is not max speed Xerneas, otherwise that turn didn't really make much sense. No, that means Xerneas couldn't outspeed the Rayquaza yeah. either way. That's the, only, that's the only explanation I can offer for that play. Otherwise there was no reason not to just fire off a Dazzling Lame and finish off the Rayquaza. Or Moonblast if you're worried about damage. Right then, yeah, so... Joseph has a pretty clear path to victory here. Just double target the Groudon. Heck, even if he protects, just encore it again next turn. And you can just play yeah, around. Melvin's only solution here is to somehow protect the Groudon long enough for the encore on Zenia to wear off and force Joseph to only encore one. <laughs> um, a pretty tall order. I mean, considering that ring. Maybe it's the only way out, to be honest. So Joseph does still have one more Pokemon at the back, though. Uh, which I do suspect it to be the Kyogre, so... Yeah, and as expected, Xerneas goes for the Protect. Double attack into the Groudon. I expect a foul play. And Lightbird going for the attack since he didn't go for priority move. Yep. So definitely a double target into the Groudon slot. Good chunk of damage. Probably a jolly max speed Groudon Should there. Should be enough for foul play to pick up the KO here. More than enough. Foul play will finish off Groudon. And we're moving on to game 3. Yep, indeed. Melvin not really playing to his easy outs, I, just, I feel. Well, as you rightly mentioned, it's Melvin that has to adjust to Joseph because uh, the threat of Rayquaza is just so strong. Uh, Melvin got away with it because of the surprise factor of the Togekiss surviving. But since now Joseph has caught on, he's instead leading with the Gengar, which is able to threaten chaos on both the Xerneas and the Togekiss at the same time. But again, Melvin's lead wasn't that bad. He led with the Togekiss and Xerneas, and as pointed out, he could just have double protected, and then next turn follow me, Geomancy, brought in Kangaskhan after that, but he didn't choose to. I'm not entirely sure why. I... Maybe that was, well, you have to, I mean, you would call it the flow chart approach to the game there. Which Melvin is usually so good at following. I, I'm not sure, maybe he doesn't see that. Um, because, like I said, most players' reaction to uh, reacting to a light part would be to uh, use an attack and maybe switch out. They, they don't think about using the follow me. Yeah, and I guess Melvin also wants to keep his option open of thunder waving the Rayquaza, which I think it's essential for his for him to get a jump, for his Xerneas to get a jump on the Rayquaza. I mean, the only other explanation I guess is that maybe he still hasn't caught on a Death Specs Gengar. I mean, he has to. I mean, he really has to. I mean, that damage... Yeah, it's, it's so obviously overwhelming. There's no way he, Melvin doesn't know that Togekiss will survive regular Gengar. Well, we are into the final game for this round 5. The winner of this will remain undefeated, I believe. Not, we, we don't know that for sure. They okay. could both be 4-1. Or 3 1 rather, going to Regardless, the both, <laughs> we are moving on to the round 3. The deciding match. game of this set. Melvin, the one having to adjust, and will adjust with Kangas Khan Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I into the Lipo Genga, it's hard to see how he's getting out of this. Uh, at the very, at the very, at most, Melvin is just gonna break even. If it's a scrappy Kangas Khan and he fakes out the Genga, the Lipo is just gonna trade fakes out, fake out with the Xerneas. I don't see the light part faking out the Kangaskhan, so inner focus isn't going to play much. Of I think Lightpart has to fake out Kangaskhan. Or Sucker Punch will clean KO the Gengar. Oh, that, that is true. Oh, and actually, Melvin Joseph realizes that. That's definitely Specs Gengar. If he's Sash, he's staying in. <laughs> Not really, though, because of the multi hit from the Kangaskhan. Yeah, definitely believing a Sucker Punch on this turn. But Kang Kangaskhan is going to be inner focus. Or, I know it's scrappy, it's scrappy, it's definitely scrappy. And fix out yeah, the it's, it's scrappy. So, Melvin revealing his Kangaskhan is scrappy Kangaskhan. Well, now Lipa could just easily But the problem, for, the yeah, the problem here, is, of course, is that again, it's kind of the same position as previously. He Melvin knows that Xerneas is slower. Then, but Rayquaza is free to pick up anything he wants because Kangasan didn't Mega. Yes. Kangasan had Mega last turn. He will be faster than Rayquaza right now. And Lipa could just easily lock it down since he has shown the pick out. So... Yeah, he has to Sucker Punch or be locked down. And so he can't even Sucker Punch. Lipa is faster. Yes. So he recognizes that, withdraws the Kangaskhan. Togekiss here. Has to be Togekiss. Yeah, maybe the Xerneas goes for the Protect. Yeah, Xerneas will go for the Protect. But again, from a K turn 1, Joseph just piles down the pressure and Melvin just unable to keep up. It's kind of, it's really interesting the fact that Specs, Gengar and Ben Rayquaza just... It kind of screws with all of Melvin's carefully constructed defenses. That is definitely... Oh, 
in his defense is not something you would commonly see. And Dragon Sand goes into the Xerneas. I'm not sure why he doubled into the Xerneas then. Dragon Sand is more than enough. Yeah, I, I mean... Oh, he, Joseph doesn't know whether the Xerneas is faster still. Okay, so at least he wanted to get some damage off. But now Togekiss has hit the field. Follow me, and he will follow me, Geomaxi. Yeah, yes. Oh, but again, he has to worry about Swagger. I think Melvin this time has to play it out. Well, I, maybe... Do you expect the Rayquaza to switch? He no. doesn't want to stay in front it's of free damage. Team. He's faster than Xerneas now. He doesn't even have to worry. The a switch will be the disastrous. The follow me from the Dogger Kiss, though. Yeah, a switch will be very bad for Joseph. Could then you let him get Geomancy out without, without any damage at all? But he does! So Mervyn will get a free follow me Geomancy. And Joseph is banking on Swagger once again. Brings in Gengar. I think even with the Geomancy up, sh should be able to take Gengar's attacks quite comfortably. We did see it took 60% from the sludge bomb. And Swagger does hit. As we will swagger into Togokis, Melvin give, having the choice now whether he wants to play the roles or bring in Kangaskhan. Melvin never likes to play the roles, so. Well, at this point, if the Togokis doesn't get off the follow me though, then Lipart can easily just on call. So yes. yes. So it, it will be a game breaking play if the confusion works out. Which means Melvin's safest play is still the switching Kanga's card. Ah uh, well maybe he reads that and Gengar goes for the slash bomb. He's going to slash bomb into the Tokyo slot anyway. Oh. So it doesn't matter whether you switch or not. That's going in there. But if you're switching Kanga's card, then even if Kanga's goes down, and Togukis comes on and can follow me again. Alright, Xerneas goes for the protect. Okay, we do expect to see the Gengar attack the Kanga's card. Will the life oh life part does go for the encore, no follow-up there. Slash bomb. Is it enough? We saw it wasn't enough, even with the poison. Well, could have crit. So either way, the Kang San does hang on for at least one more turn. Which is all he needs. Yeah. The Scrappy Fake Out or even the Sucker Punch threatening the Gengar there. The question here is that, does Melvin... The thing is, even until now, he hasn't seen whether Gengar is Sash or not. I think the damage is, good, is, a, is an indication that it's not. But if it isn't, then he, wants, he might want to consider Moonblast into that slot. To take it out entirely. Mm. Well, but he, he does not want his Xerneas to be on court, that's for sure. So I think the fake out is definitely going it's on. The fake out is coming up, but now the, now the question is, does he want to be locked into Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam? Oh, Life Art actually switches out. I think predicting the fake out. And switches in Kyogre. Free damage onto Kyogre. I suppose he preserves his Life Art Sash this way. I think it's more important for him to preserve his Rayquaza, actually. He does preserve his Sash, at yeah. least. If it is on, on the Life Art. But now that, yeah, Geomancy is up on Xerneas. I expect to see Moonblast come up from Xerneas to kill one he killed the Gengar. Let us see. Oh, oh well, well, we have to wait a bit. Kangaskhan goes for the Mega Evolution here. Well, then again, he does have the option of Sucker Punch. But did he really risk it and not fake out the Kyogre slot right no. now? Melvin's not going to take that risk. He will go for the fake out into the Kyogre, do a good amount of damage to that uninvested in Bulk Kyogre. I think we're going to see Moonblast. Oh, he's still going to do Destiny Gleam. So he will still be eating the Slash Bomb. As we saw, it does a lot of damage. But he targeted it at the... Hmm, that's fine. Kangasang will go out and he's still getting the poisons every single time. So he's now on the timer. Uh, it's not something that... Yeah. Melvin... Forced back a little. That poison on Zanyas is... Might just have cost him the game. Yeah, I mean... How do I put it? Extreme speed? I mean... Rayquaza can just bypass the speed advantage that Xerneas has. Oh, but there's no hits on the field. Yes. So Xerneas was always going to be safe, but now that the poison is there, it's Might just a matter. huge yeah. drawback for Melvin. And at this point, maybe he wants to protect yeah, his Kyogre. He's just going to store the poison out. He has yeah. no reason not to. He'll bring in Lightbird for free and just fresh fake out once again. Force Xerneas to protect and take more poison damage. Now that Xerneas is poisoned, there's a very clear path to victory for Joseph. You could argue that the Gengar being having a boosting item also play a critical role because it reduces the amount of turns that you need to wait for the Xerneas to fade. So I believe another two or three more turns should be enough. Lepel will come in here and force Xerneas to protect. Force both to protect, honestly. And Xerneas only has one turn left. And the thing is, during this turn that Lepel is free, Kyogre is going to attack. So Kyogre can protect on the turn, Xerneas has to attack and Xerneas will go down to poison. And Rayquaza will come in again for free. Yes. That poison has just pinned Melvin down entirely. He can't do any he can't get around the poison at all. 
Which is why I thought he might have wanted to go for Moonblast to just KO the Gengar but right off. Maybe he hasn't caught on. on he had, maybe he hasn't caught on that the Gengar is not Sash. Yeah. And he actually withdraws his Xerneas, giving up the boost as well, choosing to bring in his Groudon. He's definitely hoping that Joseph faked out the Xerneas slot. And well, if Kyogre went for a water attack, it's not going to do anything this turn. Barring a role play from Lightbird. Yeah, and we do see a fake out onto the It does go on the ground, so Melvin does call the switch correctly. Ice Beam will go into Togekiss. Yep. Which Good amount of damage. Yeah. Drops the Citrus Berry, which may not be enough to survive one more, actually. No, but I think if he goes for the S Slash here, doesn't matter. Oh, it goes for the Thunder Wave, actually. Onto the Light Part. Hmm. Interesting. I think he's trying to finish the game with uh, Groudon's Sweep. No, I believe it is going to be a Speed Die between the two Primals. Uh, well, not really, since... Togekiss, he just follow me, uh, attacks away from the Kyogre. So but I don't think he wants to open his Togekiss to the Ice Beam. I, I'm not sure he has a choice. And well, Lightpart is free to get off at least a free... Actually no, Togekiss has to follow me, or Lightpart's gonna lock into Thunder Wave. Ah. Oh, can you just protect and follow me right after that though? Yeah, I think I think protect on Togekiss is the better play here. And let Growler try and win the speed time. Oh, Lightpart actually switches out. So Rayquaza coming back in. Oh, he's trying to fish for the water attack on the on the on the Groudon. Ooh. He wins the speed tie, this game is over. Oh, but, oh, but he goes for the ice, ice beam. beam. Why? And he even weakens the attack. So that's a strange play. Oh, he gets the freeze, okay. And we do see Rock Slide coming off. Should be enough. Yep. Takes out the Kyogre. Damages the Rayquaza a bit. I'm I'm a bit confused by that play. Yeah, I mean, it would make sense if the Kyogre actually went for a water attack. Just get the air slash onto the Rayquaza. Well, I think he enough. wanted Thunder Wave there. Mm. He definitely wanted Thunder Wave there. So, at this point, but at this point, what do you do from here? It's a very yeah. weird board position. Because Togekiss, Togekiss, Togekiss is going to follow me. So, Dragon Sense going into the Togekiss. So, you can't even afford, really afford to lock yourself into the Waterfall at this point. Although, actually, that's the one option. I think you can. At this range, the Togekiss is enough to be pick, picked off. I do see Fake Out coming out onto the Togekiss. Oh, I think he did go for Waterfall. Is it Waterfall? And it is he Waterfall. Goes for the waterfall. He's gonna pick off the Rayquaza, the Groudon in one hit, and that should be game for Joseph. Interestingly, the Togekiss didn't go for Follow, follow me. me right there, yeah. I oh, mean, it was picked out, so it didn't matter. Yes, that's true. I suppose the strange play is why Melvin didn't double protect there. And now all Joseph has to do is let Zernis die to poison. Yeah, and quite crucially as well. Like, but if it is holding the sash, should be able to wear things out. Should be able to win the game uh, for Melvin, uh, for Joseph over here. Very interesting play. Hmm. Melvin definitely would have wanted to Thunder Wave on that turn Rayquaza switch in, as opposed to the S-Sash. And Togekiss goes for the follow me here. Swagger comes out, okay. And a waterfall should be enough to kill the Togekiss. Right, so waterfall takes out Togekiss, but Dazzling Gleam will not. If the Lightbird is Focus Sash, it will hang on and Xerneas will go down to poison. Actually, wait, let me see the. I, I have to see the HP though. I believe it is Focus Sash. Yes, yep, it, it is. is. So Lightbird Sash sealing the battle. No, but I mean, is the HP enough? I don't recall. The Xerneas' HP. Like what is faster and we'll get a far play off anyway. It's been thunder waved. Has it? Oh it has! <laughs> oh! I did not even realize that. Swagger, I think, is the only way out here. Oh if he has protect it now is the way to use it. It's going to swagger. <laughs> this game will come down to the swagger roll. Xerneas is confused. And the winner of this set is. Oh! oh, we know the set it's is going Joseph. to be Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> right down to the wire. All the way down <coughs> to the final 50% dice roll. 45 really, considering Swagger can miss. And Viper could have been fully paralyzed. But also not in Joseph's <laughs> favor at all. He had no choice. He but had he had no choice. choice. The win was there. He had one option, he did it, he got it. Oh. And we'll move on. Despite that. Dubious maybe win condition. I think he deserved it. I mean, he did 
identify the strategies that he needed to beat Melvin with. And he did identify that Dragon Ascent onto the tokens was not really enough to seal the win, so he'd find other ways. And the Gengar, you could argue, was very, very important to his win as well. Yes, the Specs Gengar just disrupted all of Melvin's calculations. One to kill the Toga Kiss, put damage on Xenia's even after Geomancy. Yeah, and on top of all that, puts poison. Uh, yes, and he poisoned timer. every <laughs> single time it hit. But really, Melvin would have to think back to the turn he does in Gleam, when Moonblast would have one hit killed the Gengar. And that took him out of the range of you know getting poisoned in the first place. Yeah, I mean, that would have been a clear. That would have been a clear Zernia sweep. He wouldn't have to switch out the Zernias. Yeah, that you're right. Absolutely. But <laughs> up to that point, I suppose he just didn't know whether that was Sash. He really don't want to Moonblast into a Sash. But really, the damage counts were very clear. And Melvin would have picked up on it. So it's still a still very questionable decision not to press Moonblast into the Gengar. Maybe he felt the Gengar was modest, maybe and still holding a Sash. I'm not sure. But in the end. What what really mattered was the light part was holding the sash to make that game that game breaking swagger yes, play. All the way he managed business information all the way into the last turn of the battle. Yes. He is... stay, and he saved him. Yeah. Alright, so we'll be moving on to the interview with the winner, Joseph. Tom. And we are here with the winner of round five, Joseph. Congratulations on your victory. Uh, uh, thank you. And I must say that it is a very nail-biting match. Yeah. A very intense experience watching you play. So I want to take you back to the first game. Um, when the Rayquaza, when your Rayquaza went for the Dragon Ascent, the Togekiss, did it surprise you that the Togekiss survived? Uh, I actually knew that the Togekiss would survive, but I didn't have any other choice because it uses it used follow me. So uh, all I can do is just hope that it maybe crit or. I somehow kill it, but which is impossible actually. Another thing that I want to ask, especially because I'm quite curious, was your Gengar. Um, yeah. it, it, I don't want to ask what item it is holding, but I do want to confirm whether it is holding a boosting item. Uh, I'll leave that as a surprise, I guess. Yeah, okay. Well, because the damage, I feel, was very, very crucial to your victory over yeah. uh, Melvin, especially when the poison came in as well. That was just gravy on top. Yeah, but, I, I realized uh, that too, actually. Yeah, so, and your use of light part as well, um, it's rather commendable as well. Yeah. So, were there any points in the game where you felt that you could have done better, or with your life part? Especially, I think there were a few wasted opportunities where he went for obvious protect into your encore. Uh, I think my lead matchup could improve. I mean, for the third game, I actually thought of bringing what I was, what I wanted to bring, but I ended up not doing so because you know second thoughts always kill people. Yeah. Then uh, whatever plans I made, I feel that. I didn't have too many wasted turns. Uh, like some of them were obviously necessary, like the multiple switches. Uh, this thing wasn't really made for, many, for multiple switches, but I had to do it. So yeah. when you mentioned that you knew the Togekiss would survive the Dragon Ascent from the uh, because of the uh, even with the Follow Me, so yeah. what was your game plan going from there? How do you decide to deal with that strategy? Uh, I didn't really have a game plan. It's just like go along with the flow, like. Maybe the most I would predict too is like two turns later or something along those lines. So it was, it was more of a play-by-play? Play-by-feel, uh, play uh, yeah, more or less. Okay, yeah. well, that I think and <laughs> the last part where it was down to a very, very decisive dice throw with the light part being paralyzed, not able to get off a foul play. Yeah. Uh, what do you think were your odds of winning there? Uh, I had a lot of faith in my light part because it, it's from 2014, like X and Y actually. It brought it all the way to 2016, so... It performed quite well, so I decided to keep it through like almost everything that I built. 
and well, despite your opponent having a handicap, only being able to bring 5 Pokemon, I still think it is quite commendable that you've managed to beat the god of the APEC region. So yeah. congratulations and good luck for your last match. Thank you.